I recently built this dog kennel entertainment center. Not really sure if that's going to end up being the name or not. I'll probably just throw the word rustic in there somewhere. I was hoping I could get it built before my uh, wife decided to decorate for Christmas, but I didn't quite make it. So here we are. We were wanting to build this so we could replace the existing entertainment center we had, which was really just a desk I built for our son a few years ago. And we also had a couple of dog kennels thrown around in different areas of the uh, living room. So we wanted to use this unit to replace all of that and give us some room back and make everything look a little bit cleaner. I wanted to do something a little bit different with this build. Typically, I'm just going to have hand-drawn plans with approximate measurements on it and go from there. Um, with this one, we wanted to do something a little bit different and try using SketchUp. I had the hand-drawn picture my wife had done a while ago, so I decided to start working on the overall design in SketchUp. I did have some SketchUp experience. About 10 years ago, I used SketchUp a lot. I did a lot of layout type activities. For instance, I took my wife's idea for turning the multi-purpose room at church into a kid's church area. I modeled it in SketchUp and made a fly-through video so she could show it to the board for approval. But I haven't done much with SketchUp lately. Here's the final version in SketchUp. You can see one side is larger than the other. The right-hand side is for our bigger dog, Riley. The left-hand side is for the smaller dog, Chip. Overall, I feel the actual version came out pretty close to the SketchUp version. I realized the color of the wood is much lighter in the SketchUp version. This was on purpose. I wanted to be able to easily see the endpoints of each piece of the wood. I had initially wanted to create a set of plans with this build. I started down the road of showing the measurements of each piece, but I never finished. And I would like to know if anyone is actually interested in a set of plans. This piece is pretty specific to our space. It is seven feet long. But if you'd like to see a set of plans, make sure to comment below and make sure you're subscribed as I'll probably do a video discussing the plans. But again, I'm only really interested in messing with plans if there's significant interest from viewers. To start off with this build, I went to the big blue box store to get some lumber. I ended up getting normal 2 by material. Using standard dimensional lumber will get us into a few issues. For one, the wood is likely going to look like it's not lining up correctly because the edges are fairly rounded. I currently don't have a planer. I was recently gifted an old Montgomery Ward Powercraft joiner, but it needs some work and a definitely good cleanup before I can use it. When using store-bought lumber, if board length allows, I cut off one little piece from the board, then flip it around and cut the remainder to length. That way I have a clean edge on both ends. Well, as clean as my old blade can do. Then I use the board I just cut as a template to cut the remaining board, that way they're all the same length. Having the design drawn in SketchUp makes it easy. I can simply look at the length and quantity needed and complete the cuts. We've got the long boards cut for the front and back. Now let's get the shorter boards for the front and back done. Here's the front or back, doesn't really matter at this point, all laid out. Now here's one of my biggest issues right now. I don't have a workbench or workspace, so I end up having to take a couple of saw horses or the remaining two befores to create a place to put the pieces and get them mounted together. A workbench is on my list of things to do, but it's a pretty big list. I'm going to use pocket hole screws to join the wood together. So I'm marking the approximate spots for all the pocket holes. Now I'll use the Craig jig to get the pocket holes drilled. Pocket hole screws are just my go-to when joining wood. But when I have time, I'd love to experiment with a few other joinery techniques. Comment below with what your favorite joinery method is. I'll get it squared up. As I'm joining these pieces together, typically I'd use a clamp to hold the pieces together. My Craig clamps didn't really fit here. 
I should have used some type of clamp anyway. You'll see later in the video I did resort to using clamps when I was making these joints and would have had a much better result. Here I'm trying to get a better angle and hold the camera with one hand while putting the pocket hole screws in with the other. Not really working too well. Again, having the SketchUp plans to refer to makes it really easy to look at the needed length for each board. Here is the front and back both completed. More pocket holes but for the sides this time. Again, I don't have a workbench, so my table saw becomes a workbench when I'm not using it. Putting the sides together. At least I'm using a clamp to hold the pieces together this time. For the sides, you can see they are divided in half. The top part is a metal mesh that's going to be recycled from one of our old dog kennels while the bottom part is going to be plywood. We'll get to that in a little bit. Here's the metal from the old dog kennel. I'll be cutting this out with my reciprocating saw. It would have likely been much easier with a grinder but I don't have one. I couldn't stomach the idea of trying to do this with a Dremel tool. I'd be replacing those little pads every few minutes. That blade made pretty quick work of cutting the metal. Now I'll drill the holes with the drill press. I just need to mark the location of each hole. I laid the metal pieces where they should approximately go and made marks. Then I'm going to use the square to transfer those marks to the correct side of the board. Yes, I realize the drill press is pretty rusty. That's what happens when your tools spend a few months in an unregulated storage building between house moves. I still need to spend some time and get that cleaned up. All drilled up. This should be the easy part, right? I was trying to hold the camera while fitting this together. Didn't work out too well. A bit easier with two hands, but I will say this entire process turned into quite the Cubert moment. If you don't remember Cubert, he was the video game character that would say a lot of expletives when he would die. Well, I may have let a few words slip out during this process. But as the joke goes, a bad day fishing is better than a good day at work. Similar thing here. Yes, this was kind of frustrating, but it is how I relax. I always hear, if you work with your brain, you relax with your hands.
Getting the first two sides was fairly easy. But getting it with all four edges is where I ran into issues. Gets so close, then it comes out of the holes on one board. This ended up being much harder than it should have been. Finally had an idea and clamped the first two boards so they wouldn't come apart. That would allow me to insert it into the other two boards. Here's the side panel with the metal mesh installed. Now we need to cut the rabbit to hold the plywood in the bottom of the sides. So I bought this rabbiting bit from Lowe's. But nothing goes simple. The bit was a little bit too large for my dust collection adapter on the router, so I'm about to make a big mess. The router leaves a rounded corner. I had two options, either round off the corners of the plywood or use a chisel to square the rabbit. I chose the latter. Not sure why I was thinking I was invisible here. There's the squared off edge. Not perfect, but I guess which old saying you use is based on whether or not you're a musician. As my band director would say, close enough for jazz. Or as my college professor who had worked at NASA would say, close enough for government work. I'm going to glue in the plywood and use brad nailer. Here's the plywood in place. Somehow I didn't get footage of nailing the board after the glue up. But there isn't much to see there. It's pine plywood. Was hoping it would look very similar to the 2x4s. Not perfect, but it will look better once it's stained. Let me give the piece a quick sanding. You'll notice pieces falling off my sander. My pad was completely falling apart. I'll post a link to the repair video where I replaced the pad. I'm not a fan of painting or staining. Luckily, my wife doesn't mind it too much. And she was really getting anxious to get this kennel finished before Thanksgiving. So she came out and gave me a hand staining. Here's the first side piece stained. And the front and back, sitting out here drying. Now to start working on the door, same process all over again. Cut, pocket holes, join, metal mesh, stain. Now we are to the point of doing a dry fit. We brought it into the shop and did a basic fitting on the floor. One thing for sure, this thing is getting really heavy. I had forgotten up to this point to build the middle piece that separates the two sides of the dog kennel. So I built it really quick and we put it in place just to test it out. While I was cutting the metal for the divider, I lost control of the saw just a bit. This is the hazard of using the piece itself as a workbench. I'm marking and drilling the holes for the divider. Divider in place and ready for stain. At this point, we took apart everything and took it inside the house for final assembly. We added the top and bottom wood pieces. We ended up using 2 by 8 material for the top and bottom. In actuality, each piece is 7 and 1 quarter inch wide. So 4 of them adds up to 29 inches. The kennel is 28 inches. That gives us an inch overhang in the front. Now I'm adding the hinges. 
I ended up using a piece of cardboard to get the door to set exactly where I wanted it to give a gap as I was putting the screws in. Outside of this little bit of footage, putting the hinges and locks on, we didn't film the last bit of assembly. This was all happening late the night before Thanksgiving. We were trying our hardest to get it done and assembled and installed before family showed up on Thanksgiving morning. We bought the black hinges and locking mechanisms at Lowe's. They weren't crazy expensive. The locking mechanisms were about $8 each. The hinges were about $11.50 per set of three. Here's the completed build after assembly. We were still decorating for Christmas, so there's a lot of stuff setting around. The dogs really seem to love the kennel. Sometimes when they are inside with us, Chip will just go lay down inside the kennel. I think he feels at home and feels comfortable in there. I so much appreciate you watching. I'd love to hear any comments, good, bad, or indifferent. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing.